Okay. Welcome families. This presentation is on tips and resources for families with high school students, and it's primarily designed for families who are new to the public school system in the United States or unfamiliar with public schools in the United States. My name is Lorna Gilmore, and I am a teacher on special assignment. I'm called a toast. And I've been a teacher of the Esquire School District for the past 22 years. And Ina, can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, everybody. I'm Ina Gangurdi. I am a family liaison, one of three in the district. Um, I support families that are in the Liberty High School theater pattern, but not exclusively. I'm, I'm happy to help anybody who has a question about high school in general. So the purpose of this day, today's presentation, as I said, is to inform parents new to the U.S. public school system about navigating ISD schools and also to provide you, parents, with tips and resources on where you can find some answers and help for future questions. So one of the best ways to get information regarding the district, the schools, is through the district website or the school's website. So many of the pages on the schools are linked to the district website. So the Issaquah School District has 22, 26 schools, and it also has a boutique school. Uh, so the three main, the three comprehensive high schools are Liberty, Skyline, and Issaquah High School. And Gibsonek is a boutique school. It's a smaller high school with around 200 some students. And then there are six middle schools and 16 elementary schools. Just to note that our district webpage is translatable. And so that's a great feature for those of you who have uh, speak multiple languages and prefer looking using one of the other languages. And if you look at the district website, you'll notice the site called Programs and Services. Under that site, um, that's where all my information will be stored and that's where uh, the work that I do. And so events and workshops are posted over here. We'll talk about some upcoming events and just make sure uh, if you want to sign up for those events, you can come here. Family liaison information such as Ina has posted here, our work and resources. I said that I'd be posting this video on the our website and that's here's where you'll be able to find it. Through the course of today, we'll talk about Canvas. We'll talk about running uh, uh, Canvas. Many parents asked about Running Start, Wanik and financial aid for college, also about course selection. A lot of that information is covered over here. Quite honestly, we will not have enough time today to go into an in-depth conversation about course selection. We do that presentation in January, February as students are registering for their classes for the next year. But the video, the recording that I did last year and the slide deck are here. Also every year, uh, we've, we've started doing actually last year and we will do this year, financial aid, running start and warning presentation. And those slide decks are available here. If you want to go to the presentations this year, you will be able to find them under um, parent events. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the session. We also have a religious calendar and some of that's part of our work we do in the cultural and family partnership uh, department as we support our families that are diverse cultures, religions, ethnicities. This page also through the school district website, you can also reach our who to contact list. Very often one of the questions staff has, parents have, is we don't know who to contact if there's a problem. And so who to contact is listed over here. So it has the, if there's an issue with secondary education and you know, unable to get answers from the principal, there's the executive director of secondary education, communications, public records. There's a general contact website directory. But this site is something we made last week based on feedback by parents like you who are saying, if we want to know more information about it, or who to report attendance, how to do our buses, how to contact the transportation department, um, class schedules, clubs, fees, where do we find all of this information? And so who do we contact? And so this, this site will give you that information and help you 
such as who to contact and where to find that information, were some of the main big questions you might be having through the course of this uh, while your child is at school. Okay. We also have a section about issues and concerns you might have. The school uh, under the school's pages, you can link to the school's pages over here. And let's say you go to the Isco Schools page, Isco School uh, Skyline and and Liberty. Their layout is exactly the same. So if I click a button that takes you to Skyline, just note that it's very similar to the layout, the page layout, the designs are all have to be consistent for all three of the high schools. And so it's going to be consistent. You'll be able to find that here. And for families also to note, if you have issues and questions in the next 10 months while or next few years, as your child is in school, there's a little directions on how do you, what are the steps to take? Who should I first start contacting? Then what do I do? Then what I do? If you need to take it to the next level, if your questions or the issue has not been resolved or if your concern has not been addressed, okay? So the website is critical. I'm gonna tell you right now that the feedback from parents is we have, it's great that there's so much information, but I cannot find anything on the site. And so if you're looking for something, quite honestly, and this is what I also do, is I really just use the site, the search site, because it's really hard sometimes to find people. Also, if you're using the directory, I use the directory a lot because sometimes um, it's hard to find staff members. But the staff is also, a staff list is also posted here. So here, are, those are some of your options for general information and uh, about the site. And finally, just letting you know, this is a Google list, and if you you speak a language that's not on you and you really need help and like to see it here, please let communications or me know, the communications department or me know, and I can share your, your, your question with the communications department so we can add that um, Google Translate button for that language, okay? So next one we're going to talk about. is the liaisons. So the liaison. So Ina just introduced herself and so you're wondering what is a liaison, but through the course of the presentation, and I apologize for this, but we are going to present a lot of information and some of you might say this is like drinking out of a fire hose. It's just so much information. Yes, we recognize that and we've gotten that feedback, but there's also a lot of information and each one of you is hoping to get a little different piece of this and ask different questions in the in the registration form. So if there's something that you missed or not quite getting and we did not address fully, there is a family partnership liaison, a family liaison like Ina assigned at each one of the different high schools. So I will be sharing that contact information so you can have an in-depth conversation with that person starting next week. If you have questions about navigating the schools or who do I contact or tell me more about course selection and they can help you more with that. So their job is to really help you help connect you with other school staff as needed or answer questions as appropriate. Or sometimes they're cultural brokers because sometimes families have a different understanding of schools or different experience of schools because their experience was different. And so it's just to help you understand the culture, the norms, expectations at the Issaquah schools. And for families that need an interpreter, the liaisons can also help connect you with interpreters as needed. The district calendar is posted on the website. It is actually one of those things I look at the most often as we are planning any trips or wanting to know the last day of school. So we go and visit it. I visit it very often. My husband with my children and me all work at the school district has it posted and saved. Note that they've even posted next year's calendar. So you know next year exactly when school's going to start and have that information. Um, in the olden days, when they were actually printing things out, they would send us home for families. They no longer do that. So it would be recommended for you to print it out so you can see what the upcoming holidays are and days off. For example, many of you might be surprised to know that October 23rd is a no school day. March 15th is a snow makeup day. January 26th is also a no school day because the 23rd and the 26th are teacher work days. In addition, There are some additional other holiday, uh, days off. Um, the December break is two weeks long. The February break is one week, April break one week. 
Um, just a note, if you're seeing this in blue and you're wondering, whoa, I didn't know my child had three days off in November, they don't. Middle and high school is only the 10th. It is the elementary schools that have the 8th, no, uh, yeah, the uh, elementary school has the 8th, 9th, and 10th, okay? Um, and so it shows you over here, the last year of school is the 18th. And note that all schools are half day on the 18th. The students are released about two hours, when, um, two hours after they start class. Other important things to note is that each one of the schools have their own, uh, own calendar. So when you look at the upcoming events for each of the schools, they all have it presented differently. But this is one of the big questions I often see posted on Facebook where parents are asking, what day is this? When is this happening? And they're looking for information as to what's happening. I have a daughter currently at Esqua High School. She's gonna be starting her sophomore year. And I'll tell you that I love the you, uh, using this calendar because very often I have a lot of questions and sometimes my daughter might not know the answer to. And so if she asks me, I help her find the information by going to this website. For example, when school starts on the 29th, there's going to be a special schedule. So if you look at the full calendar, you will note that you can actually look and see what the first day of school's schedule is going to be. So then she is better prepared and knows what to expect. So usually I look and see what the schedule is. Um, I'll honestly tell you, I'll ask her to take a screenshot or sometimes I'll just take a screenshot and send it to her so she knows what period she has when. That first week of school, there's also another different schedule on Wednesday. And then it tells you that on Thursday, the laptops are gonna be distributed, it's gonna be picture day. So, uh, you know, no school on, on Monday the 4th. So there's a lot of things going on that first month of school. So it's really a good page for you to keep yourself, to help you keep yourself organized and help your child. And then um, coming up soon, in about four weeks, we have a homecoming game and dance in most of the schools. So this is a good place to go to as you're looking for information of, uh, regarding your school. And you'll see that all of the schools in our district uh, have the exact same layout and you can get the same information from all the schools website because the layout is the same. Uh, so you have your calendar piece also over here. You can see the dates coming up. Um, the schools, sometimes are having a orientation. All three schools have an orientation for new students, all of you, on the 28th of uh, August. And Liberty and Skyline is in the daytime. Issaquah High is in the evening. So it gives you information so you and your child, this is really helpful for your child to attend. I just highly recommend your child make sure they visit the school, walk around, get the layout before school starts. Uh, so they have this information. Again, showing you picture day and the picture day of Liberty looks like it's the same date. Here you can see that curriculum night at Liberty is on the 7th. Um, Skyline and Isco High is on the 12th, but that will be a different, um, the 12th, it's on my slide. So this is the different information you're going to find on the calendar. So keeping track of schedules for yourself sometimes can be a challenging adding children to it can be quite quite the challenge. So I would strongly recommend that you visit the site. If you're looking for important dates coming up, you can look a couple months in advance. Also, the school sends out a weekly bulletin. Every Monday, you will have gotten that bulletin already. Every Monday, you get a email from the school district ISD bulletin. Every family who is in family one gets this. I believe family two families also get it. So you definitely get it. If you're not getting it, you should contact the communications department or call the school to see why you're not getting it. So the district bulletin comes on Monday. And then on Thursday, there's an e a bulletin that comes from the high school. So I would definitely recommend that parents read both of those bulletins for important dates and important things. Honestly, if you have to prioritize one, prioritize the school one because it's going to tell you important dates for the school messages from the principal what's going on so that is a really important one to make sure you're seeing and that will come out on Thursday at four o'clock so we talked about the upcoming events the bell schedule 
So the bell schedule is also on each of the school's webpage. So for the first week of school, if your child is new, I would definitely recommend taking photos and giving them a picture of it so they can carry on their phone or print out so they can keep track. The Monday, Thursday, and Friday bell schedule is the same, but on the not the block days, which is Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, it's different because classes are about 90 some minutes longer than that. So on Monday, Thursday, and Friday, students will go to all seven classes, one through seven. But on Tuesday and Thursday, they go to a slightly different schedule. On Tuesday, they attend periods one, three, five, seven. And Wednesday, it's a shorter day, they'll only go to periods two, four, and six. So this is another site that's helpful especially if you're planning on picking them up from school early, if they have a dentist appointment, doctor's appointment, you're planning some kind of early leaving time to take them somewhere. This is all very helpful for you to have uh, if you're going to interrupt their schedule. But honestly, this is important for your child to know and have it in their back pocket. This information is also shared with them on Canvas. They have access to this on their Canvas accounts. But this is where the bell schedule is. And this is really honestly more helpful for parents. Just to note that all school parking lots, especially Esquire High School, is a complete mess in the morning. So if you're dropping them off early, prepare to be very early. And if you're picking them up, the lineup to pick up kids, even though school ends at 2.52, uh, lineup starts at 2.30. So to pick up kids at the high school. So just keep those things in mind if you're planning on picking your child up from school. The grading calendar. So here we have two sem semesters. So first semester is going to end on January 6th. One thing for you to know about that is before the last day of the semester, the students are only going to school for half a day. On Wednesday, they might go to school all day, depending on sometimes they give them like study time and an assembly or something. But what I noticed last year for my daughter, who was a freshman in January and in June, she had only two hour days for most of that week before the semester ended. So again, the, the bell schedule is going to be critical for you to know and also what days they have their final exams. So the students will literally go to school for, let's say, uh, two or three hours, take their final exams for those periods that scheduled on that day and then the school bus will bring them home or if they're driving, they'll drive home. And then at the end of that semester, about a week later, their final grade will also be posted in family access. However, throughout the course of the whole year, you're always able to see the grades posted in Canvas. And we'll talk more about that, which is going to be key. If your child is staying a semester long class, so just from now until January, the schedule will change second semester. Now, all of you hopefully know, and if you don't, I'm gonna let you know that schedules were released on Monday. So if you have a student in high school, your child should have been able to access into their student access and look at their school schedule. I know that a lot of the kids are posting their class schedule on Instagram to find out which other friends are in class with them. Your kids might be new and not quite into that yet, but the, if uh, they ha can, they should be able to access their, their, their schedule for the year. It's important that you check that though, just not for friendship wise, but just to make sure it's accurate. Does your child have the classes they signed up for? Are they missing an English class? Do they have a math class? Sometimes things happen and maybe they have two math, but no English and you're thinking, oh, this is a mistake. So just double check to make sure it looks right. Um, and then, if there is a problem, there's a site, there's a link that the school has on their website that you can email, sorry, that you can uh, lock, you can fill out a form. It's pretty much a Google form. So the counselors know that there's a problem with your schedule and then they're going down methodically addressing those issues, okay? So the first day of school, many parents are asking, well, what supplies do I bring for my child? Honestly, at the high school level, you're just bringing general supplies maybe some spiral notebooks, some paper, but I wouldn't get too much for the high school level. 
because their teacher, the classroom teacher, is going to give your child what's called a syllabus, the first two days of class, and that will tell you exactly what they need. And there's really, unless the teacher is asking for certain supplies, how your child does and what supplies they have is really based on their preference. Nearly all of the work is done on laptops and submitted through Canvas. So sometimes teachers will have handouts and they'll ask the students to keep the handouts in a binder or in a spiral notebook. So you're going to listen to what the expectation is from the teacher. And that information is given to your child the first two days of school. And that's the kind of information you will get at curriculum night when you go on the 12th. So one of the reasons why curriculum night is so helpful is curriculum night, the teachers explain the expectations for the class. So it's not just the curriculum is what's going to be taught. That's one of it, one of the things, but it's also what are the expectations of what, you know, if your child is absent, what are the makeup policy? If your child is, fails a test, what's the expectation? How can they retake the test? If your child doesn't understand something, what is the way for them to get help? So while the teacher explains all of this in curriculum night, I just want all of you to know that part of the US school system is very much about independence. So the teachers might be sharing that information with you, but the expectation is if there's a problem at school, the student is going to start by asking the teacher how to get help first. So that information is shared with you at curriculum night so that you are partnering with your child to help your child get understand. Basically, think of yourself as a mentor coach, how to get you, how to help your child if they're struggling, especially as a new child in the school system or a new child in the school district. Um, lockers are available, but I'll honestly tell you, very, very few kids use lockers in high school. Most kids carry everything in their back. So the backpack becomes an essential item. And yes, it can be ridiculously heavy. Uh, it's going to have their laptop, their lunch bag. And the good news, honestly, is most kids don't carry lunch uh, school books anymore because school books are all digitally available in, uh, via Canvas. So the first week of school, actually, teachers are most likely within the first week of school going to give your child a book. But the expectation usually is the kids are going to take that book and leave it at home. And then when they have assignments, they'll use it as needed. But most of the time, kids access their books via their um, Canvas online, the online book. Next and last one for this slide is the day before school starts. I already mentioned this when we talked about upcoming events. Just a reminder, it's the, the Liberty and Skyline schools have a, a student new student orientation day. And Issaquah High has it in the evening. I think it's from 6 to 8. But it's a really important day because it's a thing coming up in future. So this is foreshadowing. They're going to have all the clubs, especially at Issaquah High, all because I've attended that one, all the clubs, uh, people from the different clubs come to kind of recruit new students to their clubs. They have information about sports teams. So they have a lot of information for new students to help them under, better understand the school. And then we have some, um, some student leaders who will give students tours of the school, but it's a great way to meet new students. And for parents, it's a good way to meet other parents too. So laptops, there's a lot of information here, but hopefully you've already read all of this information because during EVP, you signed a form about laptops. So yeah, laptops are given to all students and you saw that most schools are giving it that very first week of school. The key thing, honestly, make sure your child is remembering to keep it charged. The number one complaint from teachers is their laptops are dying and they're not fully charged. Also, there's always a question of, I don't like the laptop the school is giving me. I want to use my own laptop. That is a question that's asked many times, and that's something you're going to have your child work out with their teacher. The school prefers the child uses the school issued laptop. It just reduces sometimes kids misbehaving, going on unacceptable websites, because on our, web, our laptops, we have blocked lots of the websites, and also it prevents, honestly, cheating because there are ways for the teachers to monitor what the kids are doing on their laptop. 
And that's why it's better to have that. In addition, if your child is having issues and uh, needs to have some IT person help them, if it's their own laptop, there's no help. School laptop, easy enough. School laptop dies, we have lots of extra charge. I mean, we say bring them charged, but it's possible at lunch or sometime to plug it in and get it recharged, okay? Also textbooks are available digitally. So they'll be accessing the textbooks via their laptop. Most of the assignments are submitted via your laptop on Canvas. So students honestly will be using their laptops a lot at school. And also when they come home, they'll be using it at home. Um, it's kind of interesting, but in high school, a lot of the teachers have their due dates for assignments midnight of that day, I know. And so uh, when your child is doing the homework, you'll see that they are, they'll be you know, making sure they get their assignments submitted on through their Canvas account by midnight. So laptops for use, um, hopefully you have done your EVP because your child will not be given a laptop if you did not digitally sign that document during EVP. Help. We are no longer doing COVID protocols per se, but just a reminder if your child is sick, has a fever, please keep them at home because COVID is still alive. And we wanna make sure that kids are feeling 100% as much as possible. Um, so to stay home, they need to have a fever. If they're vomiting or diarrhea within 24 hours, they should stay home. The students have symptoms like uh, sore throat, cough, body aches, head, headaches, chill, diarrhea, vomiting. Honestly, the suggestion is to keep them home. Uh, there are also vaccines not technically the COVID one, but these are the vaccines needed for students to start school. You already filled out those applications, that form when you registered your child. The only difference is Tdap. The Tdap, there's one extra dose that's required at the seventh grade level, but that's the only extra thing, but you will be contacted by the school nurse if anything is needed. Uh, the schools all have the school nurse, and if there's anything going on with your child, the school nurse or the the assistant, the health room specialist, will contact you. And depending on what's going on with your child, you will have to visit the school to take your child home or they let you know what's going on with your child. But there is a health room specialist and a school nurse at all uh, three of our high schools. Attendance. Just a reminder that attendance is compulsory for students between the ages of 8 and 18. So all students in the United States, Washington State especially have to be attending school until they're 18. What that also means is because your, your child is enrolled in our public school system, your child is ent entitled to an education until they're at least 18 years old. For special needs students, usually there are exceptions and they can be older. But children until 18, it's compulsory for them to be attending school. So in some countries, I know that if a child is not doing as well, and then they have to you kind know, of withdraw from the school or something. So if a child is failing some classes in the US, they're still going to attend school because they have the right to attend school till they're 18 years old. If your child is gonna be absent, let's say you're taking a trip absent for some reason, wedding, whatever, please make sure you fill out a prearranged form for absence. You should always make sure you call and email the attendance office if your child is going to be absent and the information about the attendance office, if you scroll down to the district web page, it's all the way in the bottom of the page. It's the attendance email and the telephone number. I'll show you next time we go to the website. If your child is going to be absent, uh, start being absent, you're going to start getting emails and calls from the school. And after a certain number of calls, um, you'll, you'll get letters. And then at a certain point, there's something called truancy court. Okay, and one of the big things is the, there's an automatic calling system. So between like 12 and 2, 10 and 2, um, you'll get a call saying your child was absent for a fourth period or sometimes in the evening. You'll get an automated message saying your child was absent during fourth period or whatever period if your child was absent. So I would check in with your child to make sure that they were not skipping the class or what happened during that period. And if the child was, present, I would email the school attendance secretary and just let them know. Um, just the only reason I say that is because a couple times I've noticed that a child was not going to school 
and the parent was believing that the teacher was making a mistake, but actually the child was just not going to class. So, you know, and then also on the opposite end, sometimes a teacher, I've done that as a teacher, so I'm gonna to totally say that that is also a possibility that the teacher didn't see them and mark them as absent or mark the wrong person on the list, but it's truly a conversation, okay? So we want to partner with you as parents to make sure that the best things are happening for your child as possible. And the teacher's marking them absent for no reason, let's get that fixed. If they're 100% sure a child was not in class with your, you know, that might be a, a concern to address. So just, that's a great conversation to have if you're, you start getting those calls. Canvas, now Canvas is critical. In high school, you are not going to have any parent-teacher uh, conferences, okay? All of the communication at the high school level comes pretty much with student and parent based. So if you want to know how your child is doing, you are the one responsible for looking at their grades posted via the parent portal for Canvas. Students have their own account and parents have their own account. And you as a parent should not be going on your child's account. It's actually the child's account has information about students in the class. And so then you're going to be breaking privacy laws, okay, using your child's username. So you need to make sure you set up your own account and you will be able to do that starting next Tuesday once uh, they're all set up. They usually take a few days or the day after the students start school is when parents can start uh, using Canvas. For those of you who are digitally savvy, the Canvas site on the district website is quite impressive. It has a lot of resources. One, it shows you how to log into Canvas. There's a video tutorial plus written instructions. I'm gonna give you a heads up. If you use Gmail, there have been problems with Gmail users. So just kind of look at the filters and just a heads up if you're using Gmail. There are also a ton of video tutorials. Some of them are even in other languages on how to use Canvas. And because Canvas is a system, it's a learning management system. Um, that's used also by many colleges. And I know I, I used it when I was getting my ELL certification. Um, you're going to see a lot of videos from other resource uh, school districts, from other colleges on how to use Canvas. So those of you who just like to read, uh, like to learn by watching a presentation, just so you know, that I will be doing a Canvas workshop, like a parent event, a video night like this on September 20th with one of the TOSAs, a person like me that works for student technology, and she'll be helping parents better understand Canvas. And they'll also help you get uh, some tips on using Canvas and setting out your dashboard and so forth. Students communicate with their teachers via Canvas. So they this way don't have to remember the teacher's email. In the Canvas account, there's like a a text a messaging button. The teachers respond to students. The teachers send students emails, reminders, bring your book, bring this, make sure you turn this in, all of that. So teachers and parents are also communicating through Canvas. Teachers also will send parents sometimes, like last year, some of the teachers would send the parents a note saying, your child has this project coming up, just keep them in mind and help remind them. So if there's communication from the teacher, the, the, that communication very often is also coming via Canvas. So it's really helpful for you to have set up your Canvas account and that you're going in and reading those messages because um, you might get notifications that you have a message or you have a grade. The emails, letters or messages sent from Canvas to an email, you'll be able to read that. One of the things I'd strongly recommend is using the Canvas app. You can't quite see it. It's the blue one. And the reason I say that is I've noticed that some parents download the app that has a red circle, but that's for students, okay? So you wanna make sure you download the Canvas app that has the um, blue circle because the yellow circle is the account for teachers. So I would strongly recommend, that was actually one of the best things I did for my understanding of how my child was doing and being able to keep, you know, account as to how she was doing. She'll tell you I did it too much. 
And so now that you'll be a 10th grader, we'll back up, back off a little bit, but it's a good way to see, you know, what are their grades? Are they turning assignments in? Because sometimes they think they've turned it in, but then there's a zero. So to me, that's a conversation. This is not something that you're then going to email the teachers. The teachers will always say, please have your child communicate with me first before you communicate with a teacher. So to me, it was more about me mentoring and coaching my child. So I see that you have a zero. What can you do? That maybe it is, she'll say, I turn it in, she just forgot to mark it. I'm like, okay, let's monitor. Wait for a couple of days, still a zero. Maybe you wanna ask your teacher, hey, can you check? Especially as you're approaching the semester date, because that semester, you wanna make sure your child's grade is up to date so your final grade for the semester is accurate and reflective of what they've done, because that final grade is then going to go onto the child's transcript, which will eventually be sent to college and will be used for college applications and such. So high school grades matter, and we want to make sure all of the assignments, projects, tests, everything they, they do throughout the whole semester, all count, all add up to create this final grade, okay? And I know in some countries, I grew up in India, the only grade that mattered was the final exam at the end of the semester. But over here, that's not the case. It really is a cumulative grade of everything they've done starting the first couple of weeks of the school year. So just keep that in mind. Um, and also keep in mind that you are really the coach. And if there's a problem with your child's grades or on Canvas, help your child coach them on how they can get help and what they can do and what the conversation with the teacher looks like. In middle school, I'd even sit down with my daughter and type up an email. Well, she'd type up an email, but I'd coach her, you know, this is how you can start it. This is what you can say, how to keep it short, how to explain yourself, you know. So that's your role. Because really in high school, we are trying to teach our students how to be independent. And so our students are the drivers of the education but we are still coaching them to make sure they're going the right direction. We can't really, unless you're doing the best you can, the, the student is advocating for themselves and it's not making a difference to the teacher, that's when you can then communicate with the teacher. But otherwise, we encourage students to do their own advocate, advocacy work. So lunch. Um, lunch in high school, there are lots of lunch options. Lunch is 425, milk is 50 cents. There's also something called a la carte that has lots of chips, drinks, and other foods. Uh, have a conversation with their child because sometimes they tend to buy a lot of foods for other friends or buy a lot of items that are a la carte, lots of the drinks and chips. So money can go quickly. Uh, freshmen and sophomores are not allowed off campus, even though they tell you they are. If you're a junior or senior during EVP, you should have had that option to sign a form saying, yes, you're giving a child permission to leave campus for lunch. So if that was not given to you during EVP, then you know your child should not be leaving campus for lunch. Some students um, at Iskwa High School, I know, will try to leave campus, but just keep in mind, have the conversation with your child. There's about 30, 35 minutes for lunch. So it's pretty quick if they're buying lunch. Sometimes, especially the first couple of weeks, the lines are long. Middle and high school students, there are microwaves for students to use. They're pretty long sometimes, the line to you heat up their food. So the first couple of weeks for sure, if they take their, I would, I personally would make sure my child had a packed lunch just because the first couple of weeks, sometimes lines are longer, microwave, every, all the lines are longer. So this way they are for sure going to get a good meal. The information about allergies and the, what the menu is, is available on the website. So if you go to the middle and high school website and you click on the August, September calendar, you'll be able to see the menu for the students. And also you can use the, the digital uh, site to look for, to look for allergies because some students might want to eat foods that are, uh, if they have allergies, to, as a parent, you might have questions, but allergy information is also available on your on the website. So menus and nutritional data, you can see um, the digital menu is something good to use for that. 
okay? If you, if your child or if you, or your family needs support to pay for their meal, I hope you have had a chance to fill out the free and reduced lunch menu of uh, application so you can get free, your child can get a free and reduced meal. The other side I also strongly recommend, it was one of the steps on EDP, but I know EDP can be very painful, but I personally like to go into my school app and I usually put some money in my child's account just in case she forgot her lunch or life was not kind to us that morning and she forgot her lunch and now she's at school and I'm not dropping off her lunch for her because I just don't. And so, you know, making sure she has an opportunity to buy meals in case she did not uh, take a lunch if you're not part of the free and reduced lunch process. And note, any money you put in your account, they can use for the rest of their school. I SD school time. So if she's a ninth grader putting that money, they can use it all the way to their senior and then get it back if she doesn't use it. So my lunch, my school app is on the, the account. If you did not have a chance to do it during EVP, it's never too late. So the next one, your bus route information is available. So I just checked this uh, this afternoon. And if you go to find your bus route, you will be able to click on, sorry, You'll be able to click on, scroll down, and you will be able to click on you know, access e-link to look up your student. I'm going to show you something very important. If it snows, you're going to look at the snow e-link to see what your child's snow bus route is. Your snow bus route, depending on how hilly an area you live in and how difficult it is to reach that bus stop, your child's bus route might be slightly different or very different than your regular bus route. So starting today, you will be able to look up your bus route and make sure I would just, if you're new to the area, you know, new to that home, uh, you might wanna make sure you know your bus route. The first week of school sometimes can be a little bit messy because the bus driver is also learning their bus route. So be sure to get there at least five minutes before before the bus is supposed to be there. Also, sometimes the buses might be running late that first week of school. So just kind of give yourself some time. So your, your username is your child's first name, last name, and then the password is their birthday. And then you can click on view your students. And when you view your students, it's gonna give you your high school and your middle school's uh, bus information. And then you'll be able to get that information. Um, and it's going to show you. Uh, so once you look at it, it's going to give you the address. It's going off her pickup, the pickup, the time of the pickup, the route number. Make sure they know their route number because going to get the bus, not a problem. That one bus is coming for you at that address. But after school, there are going to be 10 to 20 buses all lined up and they've got to know what bus to get on. So know their route number. And then also the bus will drop them at a certain address. Most often it's the same place. And then this tells you what time to expect them home. And so you know what time to come home. So they have usually at least 15 minutes from school ending to get on the bus. Um, and then school, when the, the school bus drops them off, usually it's early enough that they have time um, sometimes, especially that first week, the school bus might be running late. So again, go to this uh, e-link. They don't, in the olden days, they used to send a little piece of paper that had your bus information. They don't do that anymore. So please do that. Now, I personally have had issues sometimes with uh, that not being the location closest to my house, being really far away. So make sure that that is actually in your neighborhood. If you have neighbors that live around, make sure that they're going there too. Um, and if you have any questions of the location of your bus route is wrong, then your neighbors and friends, make sure you call transportation dispatch and you ask them to have it fixed or routing, sorry, transportation routing. Because your child's name is on a list for with a bus driver and you want to make sure your child can get on the bus to go to school. Okay, so make sure your child is picking up the bus at the address listed for them because on the other side, the bus drivers have this information with a roster of which children should be getting on their bus. The 
The best thing I love about the district and public schools uh, here is the fact that if your child is in an after school club or sport, great thing about middle school and high school in Issaquah is there is an after school bus for them. So if your child does join a club or does an after school sport, know that Monday through Thursday, we don't have clubs meeting or sports on Fridays unless it's like a football game. Um, but there's an after school bus that will bring them home. Now that bus information is also on the website. And so you can uh, find out what bus route that they will be taking. So make sure you're looking at that. And finally, there's something called an emergency transportation bulletin. That will be mailed to you sometime by mid-October. And that just reminds you, it, it, I would post it somewhere. It has a number, it tells you to, you know, what site to go to in case of an emergency and what to do in case of emergency, what to do in case of school closure, what to do if there's like a sudden storm at school, what if the school is shut down because there is, you know, a fire or something. Now, all of these things have happened, all the kids have been safe, but the school always creates plans, such as, you know, if there's a lockdown or a bomb threat or, you know, whatever, don't rush through the school, there's going to be, it gives you all those protocols. So for new families, I noticed like one or two of you put those questions about safety in the registration, read that, that document, the emergency transportation document, all families receive it by mail. So take some time to go through that. It's also on the school district's website. Um, last year's will be posted at this time. So take some time and look at the emergency transportation bulletin and make sure you're familiar with what the school's policies and procedures are what happens if all that information over here, also um, inclement weather and what to do, alternative routes, all of that information is over here. And also, as we're talking about uh, what to do and other safety concerns, there's an entire site with safety information, which we won't be going over today. But please note that if you have safety questions or concerns, there are some information, there's a site with some information on that. And also uh, we talked about for your school about attendance. And I said, I'd show it to you eventually, but um, if you're calling, you need to call your child. If your child is sick, you can click on here for an email the attendance secretary or call that number and leave a message, listen to the prompts and listen to a message regarding um, leaving a message about your child being absent. Sports. So school sports have already started. So on Monday this week was really a meeting from at many of the schools, but football, for example, they started practicing early August, maybe end of uh, July. The cross country kids have all been practicing, gone to camp and so forth. If your child is interested in a winter sport now, that's still feasible if they've not done final forms or done those things. That starts on November 13th. Just keep these dates in mind as your child is doing sports next year, because for the fall sports, a lot of the fall sports activities and try, uh, tryouts practices start in August. Also, to join a sport, you need to have something called final forms. There are a lot of forms and then it's separate portal. There's a link here to final forms. You've got to create a parent account and a student account, fill out all the forms. If you your child wants to participate in sports, or clubs, they need to have paid an ASB card fee. And your child on picture day will get an actual card with a picture on it, and there'll be a sticker or there'll be some notification on that card that says ASB fee. And students to go, when they go to games, they pay a certain fee. Um, if they are an ASB student versus not ASB student, but in general, being an ASB student, and ASB, by the way, means associated student body. So this, what it means and what it does is all the students in the school put the fee in and using that money, the school is able to pay and to offer sports and clubs for students at the school. And often we have uh, boosters and other groups that help raise money to support that. But the ASP budget is very different than the school budget, okay? So schools have the school general budget that the government gives them 
but then we have this ASD fee that is also coming from this ASD fee that students pay that goes towards clubs and sports. If you participate in three sports, you will not be charged um, for spring sports. So the fee for sport honestly is a bit expensive. It's around $200, I believe. And so there's a cap of how much you're gonna pay per year. If your child is super sporty and wants to do a, a sport every single year, you'll only have to pay for two instead of three sports. For those families, because it can be expensive, if you need financial aid, it is critical that you have a conversation with a bookkeeper. If you did not qualify for free and reduced lunch, if you qualify for free and reduced lunch, um, the ASB card and the sports fees will be waived, but you need to make sure you've made that note on your free and reduced lunch application. And if you're not sure, a conversation with the bookkeeper would be great. Now, to get more information about the athletics, all of this information, each school has very clear information and they have announcements. All of this is very clearly shared with students at school. So you can see the athletics announcements were already put in for Liberty. Uh, they have a site for fall and just spring sports that gives you start dates. It also gives you coach information. Um, all of that is really important. So you can talk to those the people in charge of those groups. Final forms are also available for here who to contact if you need help because that was one of the things that came up earlier. So all of this information is on the website. It just, I know it's hard sometimes to navigate. So let's say you are at Liberty and you had questions about sports and you're just a little bit like, I'm getting confused. You know, would be the best person to contact because she is the liaison for Liberty High School. If you're at Issaquah Middle, oh, sorry, Issaquah High School, it's Liliana and we'll talk about liaison. So. One of the other messages I hope you're getting today is there's a lot of information, yeah. And don't feel alone because no one's expecting you to know everything and figure this all out. That's why the district has hired family liaison. So if you need a little bit of hand holding and have questions, someone is there. So while you're gonna probably take in only about 50% of the information, note, you'll get your slide deck. So you can look it up if you need to, or you can also have a conversation with a liaison for things that didn't quite make sense to you. Clubs. Here's another one of the things I love about the school district in Issaquah, because we, especially at the high school, oh my goodness, there are so many clubs and it's so important for your child to join a club. And honestly, a child is most likely going to do two or three clubs. And doing a club is really great for students because it really helps them connect with other people. You know, kids are looking looking for their tribe, looking for a place to belong. And this is a great way for them to find other kids like them. And literally this one shows you that Skyline has at least 40 some clubs, more than that. Well, wait, wait, look at us. We're, we're going down to at least 67 clubs, okay? So there are a lot of clubs. So each website, now the number of the clubs at Skyline are not gonna be all the same as Esquire High and Liberty. It depends on what the students are interested in. But if your child is interested in a group and there's not a club, if they find four or five other kids, usually it's about five. They can talk to the ASB advisor at their school and they'll know who that person is. That person does a lot of assemblies and is very visible at the school. And they can create a club. Uh, this website here shows you the meeting dates, the meeting times, the room number, a lot of this information uh, about the club. You know, we have engineering club, green team, uh, Indian Culture Club, GSA, Java Club. So a lot of information and lots of different clubs are available over here. So um, there are a lot of posters around the school for your students. You're not gonna be walking around the clubs at the uh, school as much. So I'll give you information about clubs. Um, I will also tell you that it was surprising to me, but my daughter last year when she started in ninth grade, a lot of information was shared via Instagram, and I had hesitated and not allowed her to have an Instagram account, but as she started in Issaquah High, so much of the information was posted on Instagram that we gave her an Instagram account, and a lot of club information is posted there. 
they post a lot of photos, a lot of different classes, like her ceramics class had their own website. A lot of different classes have their own not website, Instagram account where the teachers would post student work, student reminders, stuff like that. So that's another great way to learn about clubs. But honestly, the school has announcements with that information and lots of posters around with that information. And the school website has a lot of that information. But um, clubs, if your child is new to the school, they're looking to make friends, they're looking for a place to belong. Sports and clubs, clubs especially, highly recommended. August 28th, when the, there's that new student and parent orientation at your school, go there. And that's a great way to, the first time my daughter went to it, the first year, the day before the first day of school last year, she was very hesitant to talk to people. But, you know, after a couple of visits to different clubs at their meeting time, she found a niche and now she's found clubs that she loves. So how can you help your child? A new school can be overwhelming. So please be their coach. Talk to them about various interests for clubs and sports. Show them the school website, lists of clubs that are available. Review the bell schedule so they know what to expect each day, especially the first two weeks of school. It's really overwhelming. And I always think the kids, because they spend two and a half months of doing very little uh, in terms of homework and, and they've not had as many expectations for them in some cases, uh, the, they, they don't have the stamina. So we're kind of helping them build their stamina and build, figure out what they need to do the first two weeks, especially if they're new to the country or school or the area. I always recommend packing lunch for students at first week of school because lines are long, lunch lines are long, things are just really busy. Check with your child on how things are going at school. They're most likely not going to have any homework that first week, but you're going to come, they're going to come home with their expectations, their classroom curriculum information. They're probably going to have to sign some forms from some teachers. Read everything that the teachers send you, send home, or read on once you get to your canvas, read the, the things they post because maybe they're going to be posting their syllabus the expectations, things like that. And as the school year progresses, make sure you're checking on Canvas and as appropriate, having conversation with your child or not. Maybe they're doing fine and you don't need to do anything. Great, because that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to help your child build that independence. Because in the US, the philosophy is in elementary school, we guide a lot more, we're very hands-on. In middle school, we try to back away, but we are monitoring. And in high school, we are really trying to mentor and coach, but pull out, pull back a little bit more and allow your child to go through and build that independence, build that self-advocacy. So communications with teachers and schools, as I said, it's through Canvas. So check your Canvas periodically. It's the main way teachers communicate with students and with families. Letters and notes might be emailed um, very rarely through family access, very often through Canvas. And all families, if you're signed up, if you have an account via Canvas or not, you're going to get that email. So just know that. Students are not going to come home with report cards. So it's January. You're going to be the one to go into family access to see the final uh, report card, okay, to log in. And throughout the year, in November, during uh, the, the quarter, mid the kind of quarter system, you're going to be the one to go into Canvas to look at grades. Read announcements, especially the school announcements on Thursday, 4 o'clock. Students are encouraged to advocate for themselves, and parents should make sure the students have communicated with the teacher before contacting the teacher. We're not saying that you're not allowed to contact a teacher. We're just saying that make sure a child has done their due diligence and their advocacy, self-advocacy before you step in. Teacher support. Encourage your child to participate in class, get help from the teacher. That was a really hard lesson for many kids. They are very hesitant to ask questions. They don't, they might not want to look not smart enough. They might not, you know, be afraid of asking teacher questions. So make sure you encourage them and tell them that it's okay. Model how that would look like as they're asking questions because some shy students, new students, really don't know how to. 
So model, talk to them, give them some tips on how you can approach. When can you approach? It's usually going to be before class or after class or they're, they're earlier if they can swing by the teacher's classroom before school or after school. But honestly, at all three of the high schools, they have this uh, nest time, it's called at some. They're changing the name, kind of a homeroom class. And during that week, they're going to have opportunities to go and check in with certain teachers. So some of you might see the schedule and say, what is this nest? What is this homeroom? So there are different activities done during homeroom. But in nearly at all three schools, one of the activities done at least a couple times a week will be to check in with teachers where they need help. So encourage your child to go in and check in with that teacher during the homeroom slash nest class to get help. As I said, independence is encouraged. And if uh, check-in, that's another reason why you want to check in with your teacher's syllabus, because very often teachers will post in that syllabus when and how they can be reached, when you can communicate with them. Many teachers will say the best way is through email. So then how does your child, making sure your child is emailing the teacher, they can CC you if it's a regular Skyward email or no their personal email, but via Canvas, I can't remember if they can include you in a Canvas email to their teacher. I'll have to double check. But you, if they send it through their personal email account, they can CC you, but it's encouraged for them to email the teacher via Canvas. Counselors, all three schools have multiple, multiple counselors and make sure between now and your child graduating that you have some kind of conversation with that school counselor Counselors are also academics counselors. If your ch child's uh, schedule was incorrect, when you fill out that Google spreadsheet asking for the change, the course change, really it's your child's school counselor who's going to be looking at it and making that change. That's how you're going to learn about course, course selection and getting more advice about course selection. Many of you said, I need more information about course selection. I'm going to give you some links and resources on how to get more information about course selection. Again, as I said, it's a different uh, presentation because it's a lot. But one of the things you need to know about course selection is that there is no one pathway for students. There are different pathways students use to get through high school, to get to what they want, to get into the different colleges. So there are many, many options. And high school is kind of a very much a buffet and you pick and choose what you want that best fits, fits your needs. The counselor is also a point of contact for financial aid, basic assistance. If your child has anxiety or depression, I would definitely ch uh, check in with the counselor and let them know that. Going to talk to a school counselor is not a stigma. And you know that some, if your child is having certain kinds of emotional or social needs, I would definitely make sure you email the counselor and let them know so the counselor can then check in on them. Most counselors are really not available for the first couple of weeks of school. I mean, they are, it's if it's an emergency, but they are really busy working on schedule changes, the academic portion of their job. And then once school starts, then they start doing more of the, you know, checking in student meetings. And your child can fill out a form and sign up to have a meeting with the school counselor also. Students usually, Email school counselors if they need something for them. And so uh, that's usually the best way. Each school has their own method of the child meeting with the school counselor. So double check to see how your school counselors uh, have meetings with them. Because it used to be a little piece of paper at IHS. And I've also seen people come in and meet, make a meeting with the counseling secretary or talk to the counseling secretary. Curriculum. Curriculum in the district follows Common Core and Next Generation standards. There's a, going to be a curriculum night that gives you more information for the schools. And the curriculum night is the best resource for the, your child's curriculum. Now, next year, when you're signing up for classes, you're then going to be going to uh, Uh, you're then going to go to the school's website see, uh, to get some information. I'm going to show that in a few minutes. Just a couple of things I'm going to quickly go through. Uh, common terms, and I know many parents who are new to the U.S. might not be familiar with them. Just remember, this is no test after this, quiz after this. 
just letting you know, ninth graders are very often referred to as freshmen, 10th graders, sophomores, 11th graders, juniors, 12th grade seniors. And your, if your child is a freshman, they're the class of 2027. So uh, they will be graduating in 2027. And so very often that's part of, you know, you'll see class of 2027 and you're like, who's that? And just know that's your child. And then high school options. Some of you are asking about that on the registration. It's called high school and Liberty has advanced placement classes. Skyline has IB classes. At Skyline, if you have a question, a couple of people are asking questions about IB and honestly, the best person to ask about IB at Skyline, they have an IB coordinator. And his name is Spencer Phelan and he is the best person to contact. And you can go to the Skyline's website and get his email, email him. But honestly, before doing that, I'd go to the website and read what Skyline has about IB, the IB program. But uh, Issaquah High and Liberty has about advanced placement. Running Start is a way for students to start receiving college credit in 11th and 12th grade. In the past few years, it has become super popular. Students take classes either at Bellevue College, Seattle, Washington, sorry, Central Washington University, some go to other colleges, um, but those are the two most popular ones. And it is really starting college in your uh, junior year. It is really for independent students. So just keep that in mind. I will be hosting an event in February because that's when the applications and students can start applying and looking into it to explain more about Running Start. So it's a different program, works really well for some, and may not be the best for others. The district also has a plethora of online classes that you can sign up for. And some of them are only in middle school, but and most of them are available for high school. And all that information is available here on the online site, online learning site. So they have a information night also, if you, your child is gonna take online learning classes. And I believe the next, I, you can see if you've, you're still in time to sign up for this semester's classes, but most likely you can take classes second semester and how does this work. So for the application course directory of what classes are offered for online classes, all of that is available there. Okay, and uh, so all that information, what classes are offered are available on online site. Career and technical education. So that is another great service of classes that schools have. And career and technical education classes. Technical issues, there we go. Each school, each school in Issaquah School District has amazing, amazing, they're called CTE, CTE classes. And here's a website that talks about all the different classes that students can take for CTE. CTE is a graduation requirements. They need a certain number of credits in CTE, which is Korean Technical Education. Uh, but there are many, many classes that they can, uh, they can take within CTE. So just know what the classes they have in CTE. And for schools, at each school, they have something called a course catalog. And the course catalog, course guide, that is the place. So every, remember, Middle, uh, Issaquah High, Skyline, and Liberty, their websites all look the same. So if you're trying to figure out how I got here, this was under, if you go to, if you go to the school's webpage, under academics, you're going to course guide, okay, if you missed it. Now under this place, it shows you all of the course, all of the classes offered what is the graduation requirement? So your child, I just told you, is from the class of 2027. So the graduation for your child is gonna be posted over here. What they need to take. So these are all the credits they need to take for them to graduate. Now, how do they get the English classes? So then you can choose English and see what classes are offered for English really at each grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, 
what classes they can take in that period. So this is a really good site for you and your child, maybe separately, maybe together, so no one's driving anyone else crazy, to check this out and see what, uh, what their course selection looks like. So again, we talked about course selection as a buffet. So this has more information and because each school might offer slightly different classes, for example, uh, Issaquah High with AP and uh, Skyline IB, I really can't do a presentation for everyone on that. That's where the counselors give information. That's where you go to the site and look for your course selection, what course courses are being offered, and then use that information to make up your mind as to, not you, sorry, your child can use that information to make up their mind as to what, what they want. Over here, it also has information about summer school programs if they're being offered, and WANIC, which is kind of like a skill center. Um, it's also a great program, but we'll have another information night for that. It's, it's too much right now. But the course guide, of course, is where you're going to get this information. Now, you heard me say a word and you're thinking, I have no idea what she was saying when she talked about uh, high school courses. So there's an opportunity to take uh, for credits. I'm sorry, I think I missed a slide. Oh, okay, so um, for high school courses, there are many choices and many options. And so students can combine different classes. They can take a at level, a standard class. They can take more advanced classes such as IB and uh, AP classes. They can take Running Start classes. They can take CTE classes, online classes. So they can take classes in these different groups and together use them to fit their, their pathway to graduate, to get the credits they need to graduate. So number one, you're earning credits to graduate. Number two, you're earning credits to meet the needs. And the, here's the key word, the second part, the admissions requirements for your college. So again, I can tell you what classes to take. If you're one, meeting the needs to graduate, two, you need you and your child, your child mainly, needs to be thinking, what colleges do I want to go to? Let me work backwards. Or oh, this college requires, has these requirements to get into the college. I need to make sure I have all of these requirements, and I'll make sure that I'm taking those requirements in high school. In addition, you're not just going to be putting all your eggs in the basket for one college. You might want to look at at least three or four colleges, maybe even five, honestly, and see what those requirements are. So you're, you're very safe that you're taking all the classes you need so that you can apply to these different colleges. Or maybe it's a technical school, or maybe it's military, or maybe it is whatever it is your child wants. Remember, it is your tailoring your program to fit the need of the adult, uh, of the child, sorry. And if you need support, you can talk to a liaison, but the person who's really the most important academic counselor, uh, academic support person is your school counselor. Your child can make an appointment with a school counselor to talk about that. In addition, we have someone known, uh, there's an office in the school called College and Career Center, and there's more information about colleges and careers there. And starting in their, I believe, sophomore year, definitely junior, they can, right now, they can visit at any time, usually during lunch and after school is where they go. So see when it's open, they can go and check it out. But very often at schools, different colleges come and they talk about what the college is like. So high schools are amazing opportunities for the students to really kind of reflect and think as to what they want, start planning ahead. Just a reminder, each semester, each class, each semester. So if your child is taking English, math, science, uh, let's say they're taking an elective of photography, they're taking an elective of PE, and then they're taking Spanish, and they're taking something else that I'm probably missing. Each one of those classes, they get half a credit for that semester. And then they get a half a credit for the second semester. So completing one year is one credit. So at the end of ninth grade, they will be earning seven credits. And so they have an opportunity to take 28 total credits and to graduate from a Washington State School, you need only 24, okay? So they're gonna have some extra credits, which is great. They can, those credits might be ones that are required for their college. 
or ones that they were just exploring. You know, maybe they really love PE and they want to take PE all four years. Don't really need PE for four years to graduate, but hey, you can if you want to. So Washington State requires 24 credits to graduate. Students need to earn a minimum number of uh, high school credits to graduate, which is 24. Usually they'll earn more than that. Some uh, schools, some students earn a lot more than that, especially um, if they're taking colleges or classes in addition, because you can take one class, uh, be full-time high school student, plus take one class that a running start program, um, it gets very complex. So just focus on the first year to, to get into the groove and then talk to a liaison or a counselor to see what's going on. Um, passing rate is A, B, C, or D. D is really not very good for the transcript, but it still counts as passing to graduate from high school. Uh, F, it's not fantastico, as some kids might tell you, or oh, fantastic, it is bad. And anything less than, uh, usually teachers put a cutoff of 59.9%, and F doesn't count towards graduation, so the student has not, not earned credit to get that credit for high school. Uh, so here we have, just to break down, way too much information. Don't spend too much time reading it. Know that it's in my slide deck, so you can look at it at a later time. Some parents asked about volunteer opportunities. So note that there are volunteer opportunities, and it's usually through the PTSA. So that was one of the links that you had to join PTSA. It's not too late. Just go to your school's website, and under Families and Communities, there's a PTSA link. They're happy to have you. I would recommend that you join the PTSA uh, Facebook group for your school, because very often they point, they publicize a lot of important dates, especially if your child is a junior or senior, because honestly, keeping track of all of those important dates, especially for a senior, with all the senior events that happen, can be hard. Uh, so that's a great site to, a Facebook group to join. Um, and that's a PTSA, so that's very much, you know, it's, like, it's mainly for information gathering. Um, there are a few volunteer opportunities for students, but again, the PTSA group will tell you what they are, so that's a great way to get involved. Read school announcements to see if there are other ways to volunteer, and join the school or the district social media group. So, uh, SOS School District has a social media group. Ina actually does a Facebook group for our, our work in cultural and family partnerships, so look for us and join. Resources, you will get the link of all the resources, including my feedback. Ina, if you wouldn't mind, um, if you can put the link, I don't think I can copy it into um, the chat since I'm looking at the PowerPoint. Also, those of you who want to get more information about course selection and credits and know what a transcript is and all of that, that's all on my eighth grade transition. So I do an event for eighth graders who are going to join high school in ninth grade in January. You're welcome to come if you want to know more before you do your course selection next year, but that's on there. In addition, I have, I showed you this before, the resource, resource page. So I have resource presentations. We'll be doing them live, but this is what we have, uh, the tutorials we've made um, for um, Canvas, for parent notifications, if you're stuck on how to use Canvas. For all of you, there's this financial information. If you're really interested in learning more about financial aid information for college and you have an hour to spare, you can watch this video because, you know, we all have an hour to spare. Or if you want to listen to my Running Start, makes some great TV watching, I tell you. Information about Running Start is here. Wanik, the late Washington um, Technical School, presented with me about warning, so that's also available here. But we have a lot of resources. Oh, uh, some families were asking me about special education. We have a very robust special education program at our school district. And so the special education program um, information is also available. If you have, if your child has an IEP, then the, your child's case manager will contact you and have a conversation with you and go over what your IP is gonna look like 
and so forth for your child. If your child does not have an IEP and you think your child should be in a special education program, there's an entire process for you to start that process. And please contact one of the family partnership liaisons next Monday, Tuesday. And so they can contact you, connect you with a special education teacher. There are usually one or two teachers at each of the high schools. So you can start that process. Uh, we also talked about uh, some of you might have children who are in the MLL program. I know I got at least two questions around MLL. And MLL it used to be called ELL, English as a, uh, English language learners. Now we, we use the acronym MLL, multilingual learners, because we recognize that many of our students uh, can speak several languages, not just uh, the language that they're native to, they might be native to several languages. But the uh, high school model you can see is over here. And very often students in high school take a separate class, an ELL class, and that helps them develop their, uh, their academic language because very often they have day-to-day -day language, but they don't have the academic language they need to ensure that they're best uh, getting what they need for their school, for school. Okay, and then here are the contacts for Liliana, who I said was Issaquah High School. Wenli, who we talked about, is from the Skyline High School feeder pattern, and Ina, who's with us, and who's at the Liberty High School feeder pattern. So at this time, we are officially done with our presentation. It looks like when the class assignments will be released, so one of the questions asked was, when will the class assignments be released? As I said, they have already been released. Your child can go to Family Access and read that. So at this time, I'm going to uh, stop the video recording.